Seo Yun Su went to meet his boyfriend after receiving a large number of calls from him. His boyfriend behaved aggressively, pushed him against the wall, and started bombarding him with questions. Wu Seob wanted to know what his partner was doing, if he was not answering him at all. Yun Su reminded him that he had warned him that he would be busy today. The guy started yelling at him, saying that he had promised him to be in touch all the time. Looking incredulous, Wu Seob suspected him of betrayal, assuming that he was secretly meeting with someone behind his back. Seo Eun Su was uncomfortable with hearing this about him. He began to explain that this was the first time in their two-month relationship that he had plans. Until then, he had always been in touch. And this reaction is like an abnormal obsession. Because last time, he had the same reaction. Unfortunately, they didn't take his words seriously, calling it an excuse. Coming to the conclusion that he had been condescending to him all this time, he raised his hand and swung. At this time, Kim Hajin was passing by. He was returning home from a party. He recalled how his friend had tearfully begged him to leave, having already promised everyone else that he would be there. He sighed at the situation. He was distracted from his thoughts by a noise from the side. He turned his head and saw the boys fighting. When the boys swung to strike, Hajun stopped him. Musiob smiled and mistook him for the person he thought Yun Su was secretly seeing. He kept talking nonsense that even Hajun started telling him to stop. When Yun Su got up, he fought back against his boyfriend. He was angry. So he took the stranger's hand and said, It was true that he was spending time with other guys, and that's why he was breaking up with him. Still holding the stranger's hand, he walked away. The ex-boyfriend shouted after them, but to no avail. For some time, they just walked forward. Hajun noticed that the guy was not even chasing them. He did not know where the stranger was taking him, but he obediently followed him. At one point, Yunsu stopped crying. Wiping away his tears, he asked himself sadly, why does he keep meeting guys like this? His first partner cheated on him with a man he introduced to him. The next one was intrusive, but he ended the relationship saying that he didn't want to meet men anymore. The third one turned out to have a girlfriend, and he was a lover. He hoped that this time everything would be different. However, no one knew that he would turn out to be so obsessed and cruel. He let go of the boy's hand and apologized to him and thanked him for his help. He was about to leave when Kim Ha-joon grabbed him in his arms. He apologized and explained that he needed to cry now, not to keep these emotions inside and not to blame himself for what happened. He added that he hoped he would not suffer too much because of that person. Yoon Soo was surprised at first, but then accepted the stranger's support. He hugged him tightly and began to cry again. Embarrassed, Yoon Soo pushed the boy away and ran away. When he got home, he blushed even more as he realized the situation. The next day, he went to meet his friend. Noticing Yoon Soo's gloomy appearance, the friend asked him what was wrong. Yun Su told him that he had broken up with Wu Xia because he was jealous and tried to hit him. The friend immediately asked if he was okay. Yun Su replied that he was fine, but it was clear how little he had slept. His appearance made him even more worried. He was ashamed to admit the real reason for his lack of sleep. When he got home, he fell asleep quickly. However, in the middle of the night, he woke up because he had a dream about a stranger he had met today. In this dream, the guy was in his bedroom and they were doing different things together. After that, he was unable to sleep. Quickly ending the conversation, Seo Yun Su got ready for a lecture that was about to start. After saying goodbye, he ran off. While watching Yun Su, a friend noticed his unusual behavior. Usually he had a hard time coping after a breakup, but this time it was different. When he arrived at the classroom, he started looking for free seats in the back. He asked a stranger if it was free. The man said yes. He was happy and sat down. The blonde man stared at him because he recognized him immediately as a boy, unlike Unsu. This made it hard for him to concentrate on the lecture, so he asked why he was watching him. He was told that he looked tired. At the same time, the guy touched his face. He had done the same gesture in his dream, so Yunsu was embarrassed. When the lecture was over, the blonde man spoke to him again. He said he wanted to apologize again for yesterday. Blushing even more, the boy replied that it was okay. Hajun looked down and noticed that Yunsu had a delicate problem. Yun Su was afraid that everyone around him would notice and think he was a pervert. Hajun covered him with his sweatshirt and asked him to pretend to be asleep. When everyone left the room, the boy breathed a sigh of relief. He thanked the blonde man and noticed that he had already helped him twice and asked him how he could repay him. How could he repay him? With a sweet smile, the boy replied that he could buy him a meal. Yun Su agreed without hesitation. Although, when he bought him lunch, he wondered if it was normal to eat together after such situations and why he agreed so quickly. He quickly found the answer. Hajun's appearance was attractive to him. A person passing by pushed Yun Su painfully. He immediately dropped everything. 
The man started to apologize, but Yunsu didn't pay attention to his words. He was holding his shoulder, which Wusiab had hit the other day. Instead of feeling pain, he saw the face of his ex, who was raising his hand against him. He thought he was fine, but he was not. Hajun's voice distracted him from his heavy thoughts. The boy kept repeating his name until he looked at him. He asked him anxiously if he was okay. When Yunsu came to, he noticed that everyone around him was watching him. He felt ashamed, so he asked the blonde man to go somewhere else. They decided to have a snack at the supermarket. Yunsu apologized for the situation. Hajun started to apologize too. After all, he was the one who was looking for an excuse to talk to him and wanted to know what happened with his ex. And he obviously didn't need to bring up this unpleasant topic for the guy. Yunsu stopped him by saying that he was very grateful to him. After all, he had already helped him twice. The blonde boy was relieved to hear this and smiled. He apologized for panicking and running away yesterday. He thanked him again and asked him his name. I'm Kim Hajun, I'm 21, the young man said and added. If you are older, please don't speak to me so formally. My name is Seo Yunsu and I am 22. The brunette said that he thought the guy already knew his name. Kim Hajun replied that he remembered it when the professor was checking the attendance at the lecture. Later, when the evening came, Yunsu received a message from the blonde man. He asked if he had gotten home safely. The boy replied and thought that he had a very handsome face, so he could not ignore him. He also noticed that the blonde man was quite sociable and kind. He decided to look up Hajun. It turned out that he was famous, so there was a lot of interesting information about him. It was strange that such a popular person was trying to get close to him. At first, Yunsu thought that he might just be a nice person, and then he thought that the blonde man had fallen in love with him at first sight. He wrote about it on an anonymous website. People immediately started commenting. The guy noticed that someone wrote that he shouldn't deceive himself. When he read it, he blushed. He had written it as a joke, but now he felt ashamed. He was distracted by the sound of the notification. Kim Hajun wrote that he would like to spend more time together and said good night. Yunsu reminded himself that he didn't need to think of anything. The guy was just being polite. In the morning, Yunsu went to the university. He called Hajun and told him he was already there. The blonde asked him to wait. He told him not to rush because he was the one who was early. As Yunsu sat down, he thought about how he and the blonde had become close after exchanging numbers. After all, their personalities were similar. But mostly, Hajun just liked to follow him around. The young man smiled when he realized that the blonde man looked like a dog in his behavior. All that was missing was a tail and ears. At that moment, Hajun came running. It was obvious that he was running. Yunsu was surprised at how quickly he appeared, especially since he had told him to take his time. The blonde man explained that he couldn't help but hurry when he knew his young was waiting. The blonde man also offered him the coffee he had bought for him. The young man gratefully accepted the drink. After that, they started discussing their plans for the day. One of the plans was to meet Yunsu's friend during lunch. The blonde asked what kind of person he was. Yumin is a good guy and friend, a person who always cares about me. That's how he wrote him. Meanwhile, Yumin was sitting in a cafe waiting for them. He couldn't help but think that this time after the breakup, Yunsu's reaction was strange. Usually, he would lock himself in his room and refuse to come out, but now he was acting as if nothing had happened. Of course, it was good that he didn't suffer, but it only meant that he had already found a new love object. But the worst part was that he only chose terrible men. Yunsu said that this time the guy was really good, but he had very little faith in it, so he asked for an appointment to see him in person. Finally, the boys came and greeted each other. During lunch, Yumin started asking Hajun questions to see if he was interested in Yunsu. He found out that the boy was studying to be a sports education major. The boy told him that he was an art major, majoring in painting. Blondie thought that they became friends because they studied in the same specialty. Yumin explained that they had been friends since middle school. He hugged his friend to show how close they were. Yunsu didn't understand why his friend was doing this, so he stopped him. They continued to talk. Yun Su found out that Hajun was not seeing anyone at the moment, so he was very happy. For Yumin, it was clear that Hajun liked the guy even when he knew that. He explained that he thought it was only natural for a blonde guy to be dating. Hajun confidently replied that he was not seeing anyone at the moment. After lunch, Yumin went outside for a smoke break. Hajun also went out after packing his things. They waited for Yun Su, who went to the restroom. While they were alone, Yumin took the blonde's phone number just in case and warned him. If his feelings were real, then let him disappear from his friend's life. Yunsu came back, so the guy said goodbye because he had to run to school. A few days later, Yunsu met with Yumin. They discussed his group project. Unfortunately, his group members were completely irresponsible. Yunsu wanted to know if something happened between his friend and the blonde guy. Yumin replied that everything was fine. 
nothing special. On the way, they met ha Jun. The blonde was happy to see yoon Su, but quickly frowned when he noticed his friend. They were acting like a cat and mouse, so it worried yoon Su a bit. He lightly hit his friend to stop him from bullying the child. The guy started making excuses that he was just teasing him. ha Jun did not like being called a child. No one came to the project meeting except them. The guy wrote in the chat asking where they were, but they ignored him. It was sad to just go home, so the blonde man suggested that they go for a walk together. The boy gladly agreed. They decided to go to a horror movie. Yunsu was shaking, even though he chose the movie. Blondie watched his cute reactions. He remembered how Hyun had called him a child and wondered. He wondered if he really thought so. Or is it because he's tailing him? Whether he should stop? What he should do in general? In fear, Yunsu turned his head to the side and saw Hajun looking at him. The blonde asked if they could hold hands because he was scared. Although the boy saw that he didn't look scared at all, he agreed. Blushing, he took his hand. On the way home, they discussed the movie. Yun Su said he liked it. Ha Jun emphasized how he kept turning away during the movie. He replied that he still liked it despite that. They wanted to go for another walk, but suddenly it started to rain. They didn't have an umbrella, so they had to run for cover. Ha Jun took care to put his sweater over him. It was better than nothing. He looked at Yun Su, who was completely soaked and ashamed. The blonde offered to go to his house, as he lived nearby. By the time they got to his house, they were completely soaked. Hajun suggested that they take a warm shower to avoid getting sick. Unsu felt uncomfortable taking the bath first because it was colder for the blonde, because he had given away his sweater. Hajun told him not to worry because he had two bathrooms in his house. While taking a shower, Yunsu thought that he did not expect to be in a blonde man's house. The house was too big for an ordinary student living alone. He wondered if he lived with a family. He finished his bathing routine and took the clothes that Hajun had prepared for him. However, when he put them on, he found that they were too big for him. So he asked if there was anything smaller. After changing, they sat down to relax with a bottle of alcohol. The happy brunette wished Hajun a good night's rest. Even though they hadn't done much today, it was still exhausting. The blonde said it was perfectly normal to want to sleep, so if he was tired, they could stay up later. The brunette refused because he planned to sleep when he got home. It had been a long time since he had been able to rest like that. The blonde man asked, you don't drink often. Yunsu explained that he hadn't gone out for a drink in a long time because he spent most of his time with his ex, who wouldn't let him go out. Hajun was angry when he heard this. He told Hyun to drink as much as he wanted tonight. He was very happy to hear him say that. A few hours later, Yunsu got very drunk. The blonde tried to stop him, but he didn't give up and kept reaching for another bottle. Hajun sighed and said that he got drunk so fast because he was drinking so much. The brunette began to cry and apologize. He said how sad he was when his friend said how fast he got drunk, even when he didn't. This is because his face turns red easily. In fact, his natural color is red, like a tomato. The blonde man noticed how talkative he became in this state. It was already late, so Hajun said that the boy would sleep at his place. He definitely couldn't let Yun Su go in his condition. He tried to talk him out of it, but to no avail. The blonde told him to get up, and he would take him to the bedroom. Yunsu smiled with his eyes closed and called the guy cute. He thanked ha Jun because he had a great time today. The brunette was having fun and was not fully aware of his actions, so he ended up spending the night with ha Jun. Yunsu woke up in the morning with a headache. He began to remember what happened yesterday, especially since he was completely undressed. His subconscious mind immediately threw up images of the previous evening. At first, he did not believe himself and claimed that it could be a dream he had had before. However, his body sensations told him otherwise. He got dressed and decided to go home quickly. He did not want to run into ha Jun, so he tried to be quiet. However, his plan was thwarted by Blondie, who suddenly appeared in front of him. Yunsu was so frightened that he almost ran for his life. He wanted to pretend he didn't remember anything, but he didn't have time. A strange girl with silver hair ran into the house. From the doorway, she began to ask why ha Jun was not answering the phone. However, she stopped when she saw the stranger in the house. Yunsu felt uneasy about the situation. It was ha Jun's younger sister, Kim ha -yung. She was excited to learn that Yunsu was a friend of his brother's from the university. Yunsu was relieved because he had already prepared himself for a love quarrel. Hajun was unhappy because he wanted to have breakfast alone with Ansu, but now that was not possible. So he told his sister to eat and leave. Hayoung calmly asked him why he was angry. After all, he had been in a bad mood the other day, so what was he doing? She whispered to Yunsu and asked if he knew the reason. He replied hesitantly that he didn't know. After everyone had eaten breakfast, the girl asked if she could come again. After all, her brother doesn't cook often. 
Eunsu also praised Hajun's food. He said it was amazing and he would remember the taste for a long time. Blondie was pleased to hear Eunsu's praise. He told the boy to tell him if he wanted to eat something. Observing the cute atmosphere between the boys, Hayoung asked if they were dating. Eunsu choked on his tea when he heard. The girl reassured him that she was just joking. The girl added, Because Eunsu is so handsome, when she came into the house, she thought he was her brother's girlfriend for a second. The blonde quickly stopped the girl from saying anything further, feeling that Hyun might be getting herself into trouble. He wanted to explain, but was interrupted. Yunsu said that he had something to do, so he had to leave. The information that Hajun only dated girls confused him. After thanking them for their hospitality, he quickly left. After that day, Eunsu began to avoid the blonde man. He noticed how the brunette was always hanging out and not noticing anything around him. That morning, Hajun was happy when he opened his eyes and saw Eunsu. After breakfast, he started avoiding him. Hajun was completely shocked at that moment. Today, he decided to talk to Eunsu because he couldn't go on like this. The lecture ended and the brunette immediately got up to leave. Hajun grabbed his hand and asked him to wait. He asked why Eunsu was always in such a hurry. Did he do something wrong? The brunette released his hand and replied that he shouldn't talk to him because if he wanted to find a girlfriend, he would only get in the way. Hajun asked him sadly if he really wanted to get a girlfriend. The brunette was confused and Hajun took his things and left. Yunsu didn't even have time to explain to him. Hajun was upset. Instead of reconciling, things had become even more confusing. He tried to understand Yunsu. Was he trying to tell him to give up and pretend that nothing had happened that night? He was distracted from his thoughts by the conversation of the boys nearby. As it turned out, they were the same people who hadn't helped Yunsu with the group project. One of the guys started to recall who the guy in the same group with him was. His friend asked who he was referring to. He reminded him of a gay boy who had taken a break from his studies after hearing that he had allegedly tried to hit on a straight man. It was Seo Yunsu. Hajun was shocked to hear this. When people found out the truth, he went back to school. And the truth was that when someone started a rumor that the two boys were dating, the man blamed it on Eunsu. He had a girlfriend, but that didn't stop him from dating Eunsu. The boyfriend started saying that he too would not mind spending time with Eunsu because he was cute. He wanted to try it once. Hajun was disgusted to hear this. He threw his bag down on the guy in anger. He came down and apologized. He said that it had slipped out of his hands by accident. Of course, it was clear that it was intentional. The guy got angry and hit Hajun. The blonde man smiled and said, I admit it was my fault, but you hit me first. He expected this reaction so that he could teach the boys a lesson. At home in the evening, the blonde analyzed everything he had learned. The situation explained why he didn't know him before and why he was avoiding him. Because of his traumatic experience, it was hard for Yunsu to trust and open his heart. Hajun was afraid for a second that he might hate him, but he was sure that the brunette definitely liked his face and body. Meanwhile, Eunsu met up with Yumin as usual. He asked him to go to a bar with him to meet someone. However, his friend refused. Yunsu explained that he was just hoping to find someone new so that it would be easier to forget about his past relationship. The friend asked if he was talking about Wusyov now. The guy excitedly said yes. Of course he is. Who else could he be talking about? The friend was worried about Yunsu. Was everything okay with him and Hajun? Would he turn out to be as crazy obsessed as all the exes? Yumin explained that he had turned him down because he was too busy this week. Unsu calmly said that he would just go alone. It's probably even better for him to go alone. After all, he has intentions of doing it. Yumin accidentally spilled his drink when he heard his answer. Still, he didn't think Unsu would dare to go alone. Yunsu quickly got up and went to get some napkins to clean it up. He explained the situation to the staff, but he thought that Yumin was worried about him too much. He was not a little child. He needs to find someone new and then he will definitely feel better. Last time he was lucky with Hajun. It all worked out so quickly with him that now he feels guilty about it. New customers came into the coffee shop. They were talking loudly, so Yunsu immediately heard when the girl said Kim Hajun's name. The blonde man was confused when he saw Yunsu. She asked him why he stopped suddenly. Hajun called out to Hyun. His friend, who was holding his hand on his shoulder, immediately recognized him by name. The brunette was surprised, so he asked how he knew. The guy told him how Hajun had talked about him at every meeting they had. He happily invited them all to have coffee together. However, Yuman appeared and hugged his friend. He politely declined because they already had plans. The blonde man was uncomfortable seeing Yunsu touching him. Yuman took him by the hand and led him away. Yunsu turned around hesitantly to say something, but he noticed the wedding rings on the boy and girl. He thought it would be better for Hajun not to interact with him and stay in his normal environment. 
Later in the evening, Hajun was about to go home, but his friends were very drunk and did not want to let him go. They hugged him from all sides to hold him. However, the blonde man easily got out of the hug. He began to scold them, because they are already in their fourth year, but they do not know their limits. Suddenly, a familiar silhouette of a guy caught his attention. When he looked closely, he recognized Seo Yunsu. He followed him, but only later did he wonder if he could approach him. Hajun was very impressed by the brunette's beauty. Onsu entered the restaurant. The blonde assumed that he had a meeting with Yumin. However, when he entered the establishment, he was confused. Everything around him indicated that it was a gay bar. Hajun sat down next to Yunsu. He watched him and thought. He wondered why Hyun had come to a place like this. For a second, he thought he should leave, but he stopped himself. If he left now, would Yunsu be okay? Eventually, he sat back down, realizing how much he would worry if he left. The blonde continued his thoughts. Hyun came to this place to find a partner. But if he needed someone, why didn't he come to him? However, if that was the case, he wouldn't have avoided him all the time. Yunsu instantly drew attention to himself. He had just sat down, and a guy was already coming to meet him. The stranger suggested that they leave the place and go and have a rest together. Hajun felt uneasy. Was Unsu really ready to go with a stranger? However, there was no relationship between them, so he had no right to reproach him. Meanwhile, Hyung calmly refused him. The stranger became angry and left, loudly saying unpleasant things to the boy. Hajun was angry at what he said, but he tried to keep his cool. Unsu looked equally angry and continued to drink. A lot of time passed, and Yunsu continued to drink. Hajun could see that he was getting too drunk. He went to meet him again. Meanwhile, an angry Yunsu did not understand why there was no one attractive to him in the place. Hajun looked even more attractive in his eyes after these guys. He realized that he was too drunk. However, because he was in a bad mood, he continued to drink. When the bartender handed him a new glass, Yunsu didn't have time to take it, because an unfamiliar blonde man drank it instead. He asked him if he felt lonely sitting here drinking alone. Yunsu started to shoo him away, but when he saw his face, he stopped talking. He stared at the silver hair that reminded him of Hajun. The stranger continued to flirt with the boy. Until suddenly, Yunsu's phone rang. He saw that it was Kim Hajun calling him. Before he could answer, the blonde man appeared and pulled him toward him. Yunsu didn't understand why he was there, but he felt cozy in his arms. He closed his eyes and fell asleep in no time. The blonde man had brought him to his house because he didn't know its address. Hajun hoped that he would be able to tuck Yunsu in before he woke up. However, it didn't work out. The brunette briefly regained consciousness. The blonde asked how he felt, but instead of answering, Yunsu threw up. Hajun quickly took care of Hyun. He hadn't decided yet how he would explain everything when he came to, and he didn't know if he'd be angry with him. However, if he hadn't taken him away, the stranger would have done whatever he wanted to him. Hajun did not want that at all. Meanwhile, Yunsu woke up and saw that his clothes were dirty. He decided to take a shower and started to undress. Hajun blushed when he saw what he was doing. Yunsu didn't have full control over his movements because of his weakness, so he slipped and almost fell. The blonde caught him easily and started talking about how dangerous it was, sincerely worried about him. Yunsu could not see the person in front of him clearly. Because of the silver hair, he thought he was with the man from the bar. He thought about how much he looked like Hajun and kissed him. The blonde man tried to stop him, but in vain. They ended up spending the night together, and Yunsu realized who he was really with. In the morning, when Hajun woke up, he noticed that Yunsu had run away. He wrote him messages, but they all went unanswered. Hajun didn't understand why he was being avoided again, especially since everything was fine before they fell asleep. Seo Yunsu hadn't been in class for a whole week, so he was determined to find another way to contact Hyun. That same day, he met with Yumin. He wondered what had happened that day that made Yunsu avoid him. Hajun asked Yumin to help him contact Yunsu, but when Yumin asked for a reason, he only got a vague answer that he hadn't answered him for days. Yumin asked him to tell him what happened that evening. Hajun continued to evade the question. Then the boy told him that if he was going to play with him and then leave him, then he should stop right now. The blonde boy confidently replied that he would never do that to him. However, Yumin did not trust him because they did not know each other well, and he didn't see any strong love between them. Hajun was concerned about one thing. Why does Yumin react so strongly every time it comes to Unsu? He asked if he was in love with Unsu by any chance. Yumin jumped up and down with emotion, but he explained that it was not possible. Yunsu is like a little brother to him, so he always worries and cares about him. Hajun was still not satisfied with the answer. He noticed that the blonde man was acting like a child. He said that they had lived together almost since childhood, so he was like family to him. So now that he understood, he had to tell him about that evening. 
before he decides to hit his pretty face. Hei Jun shyly told him what he had confessed to him that night. But then Yunsu ran away. Yumin asked him if that was all. And then he explained that he would get in touch with him when he was ready. So we have to wait. Later in the evening, Yumin checked to see if Yunsu had replied to him, but nothing had changed. As he lay in bed, he remembered Hajun's question. Why was he so sensitive when it came to Yunsu? But it had been like that since high school. He's been there for him and seen him worry. So he will always support him, no matter what. Meanwhile, Seo Yunsu, who was always in bed, woke up to the sound of notifications. He wanted to put his phone on, do not disturb mode. But before he did, he looked to see who was texting him. He saw messages from Yumin and Hajun. His face immediately turned red as he remembered how the blonde had confessed to him. Yunsu started to think about why Hajun liked him. Of course he liked the guy too, but he was scared. Even if they started dating, there was no guarantee that everything would be okay. Moreover, he had no positive experience in relationships. He was afraid that Hajun would be like all his exes, and he would probably get bored with Yunsu quickly. Suddenly, the phone beeped, and the brunette was frightened. He thought it was Yumin, but he saw a message from an unfamiliar number. It was Wusiab. He apologized for his behavior and asked to meet. Yunsu was not going to answer, but his ex called. He quickly calmed down and answered the call. The next evening, Yunsu met Yumin at a restaurant. As he watched the brunette get drunk, he realized why he had answered his call so quickly. Yunsu did not deny his desire to get drunk. His friend asked him what was wrong and what was the reason for his worries. He told him that Wusiab had written to him. Yumin was surprised because he remembered exactly how his friend had blocked his ex. Yunsu explained that he had texted from an unknown number. The friend was furious. This ex was the most miserable of all the exes. He told Yunsu to be careful and not to go alone. Yunsu started to cry, which confused Yumin. He explained how sad he was about the whole thing, how afraid he was of Wusiab, and how sad he was about the kind of partners he was getting. He began to think more and more often that maybe he was the problem. Yumin stopped him. He explained that he was just in love and that it was normal. If he was having a hard time, he could easily tell him everything, so he didn't need to think that he was a burden to him. And he likes it better when they talk like this than when he closes himself off and lives his pain alone. Yunsu was touched by his words. He called him a great friend. Yunsu said he would listen to him. He told him that during the last melt, Hajun had helped him and comforted him. It was strange and nice. No one had ever done anything like that for him before. Later, Yunsu got drunk, so Yumin said they should go home. He was too drunk, so his friend warned him that he would quickly go to the restroom and come back and they would walk home together. Yunsu agreed. Yumin was about to leave when he received a call from Hajun. He was worried about Yunsu and whether he was already back home. The guy replied that they were still at the restaurant and Yunsu was very drunk. Hajun asked how Hyun was feeling. Yumin replied that if he was really worried, he would have come earlier when he called him. The blonde explained that Yunsu was not comfortable around him right now. The friend said they should make up soon. However, he suddenly stopped talking. Blondie asked what was wrong. Yumin explained that Yunsu had disappeared. Meanwhile, Yunsu felt like he was going to be sick, so he grabbed a pole to steady himself. He gathered his thoughts and walked home almost confidently, despite the pain in his head. He almost remembered what he had agreed to with Yumin, but a familiar voice suddenly called out to him. He was frightened because he immediately recognized Wusub's voice. The former asked him, smiling, if he missed him. Yunsu asked him anxiously what he was doing. The ex said that he really wanted to see him. Wusub could see his hands trembling with fear. He apologized for that day and promised not to touch him again. But of course, they did not believe him. Yunsu took small steps to move away from the boy and run away, but he didn't have time. Wusiab grabbed him and stopped pretending. He said that simply blocking him was not enough. He knew his address. So he came to his house and noticed that he was not at home and went looking for him. The boyfriend started to squeeze Yunsu's hands hard in anger. He could smell the alcohol on him and did not like it. Yunsu asked him to stop, but to no avail. Wusiab was angry that Yunsu was spending time with other men. He no longer had control over him. He suggested that they start over. Yunsu didn't want to answer him, just tried to push him away but it was difficult because of the alcohol in his body. He was afraid of Wusiab's appearance. He thought that if he knew he was blocked, he would have found another way to contact him. But for some reason, Wusayab came to his house. But how did he contact him then? Yunsu asked what number he was calling from. The guy replied that it was someone he knew well. Yunsu was a little confused, but quickly pulled himself together and asked sadly, why was he looking for him if they had broken up that day? Meanwhile, Hajun and Yumin continued to search for Yunsu. The blonde man said that he had been to all the bars around and asked where else he could have gone. 
He was ashamed that he could not help anymore. Yuman replied that he was already near his house, but a sudden scream cut him off. Hajun quickly recognized Yunsu's voice and ran in his direction. Yuman asked what was wrong, but there was no answer. When Hajun arrived, he saw his ex yelling at Yunsu while holding his arms tightly. The blonde man got angry and hit him. Yunsu watched in shock as Wusiob fell to the ground from the blow. He turned his gaze to Hajun when he asked if he was okay. Yunsu asked him how he came to be here. The boy explained that Yuman had told him that he was missing, so he immediately ran to find him. Yunsu asked how he was doing because he noticed how sweaty the blonde man was while looking for him. It was clear how long he'd been running before he found him. Wu Siob started yelling at the blonde man. He started talking nonsense about how he had no chance with Yunsu, even if he likes him, because as long as he expects him to reciprocate, Yunsu will be looking for a new lover in a gay bar. Seo Yunsu was disturbed how he knew what place he was mercilessly visiting. Wu Siob was obsessed with him, so he had many sources of information. Yunsu felt guilty. He knew that he liked Kim Ha Jun, but he was afraid of his feelings and started to avoid him. And he still hasn't given him an answer. Ha Jun was probably feeling depressed. The blonde man stopped him and said, Seo Yunsu will decide for himself whom to love and whom to reject. What do you want to hear from him? All you know how to do is threaten and lie when people don't do what you want. Is this really how you solve problems? Wu Siob denied what he said, but Yunsu got his courage up after Ha Jun's words. He said outright that he wasn't afraid of him anymore. Moreover, the guy is no different from other exes. Yunsu can't even remember anything special or good about their relationship. So now he will be with Hajun, who will definitely make him happy. Wu Siob gets angry at what he said, but Yunsu continues, Did you really think that I would just go back to you? I'm not even sure if you really love me. Wu Siob said that he would never give up on him. However, he was stopped from further action by the whistle of a policeman. Yuman ran after the policeman, telling him to detain the man. The man got scared and ran away with the policeman. Yuman arrived just in time. He immediately grabbed Yun Su and asked if he was okay. The boy reassured him and told him that Hajun had saved him. Yuman breathed a sigh of relief, and then he immediately got angry and began to blame Yun Su for running away even though he was asked to wait. Yun Su quickly apologized. Hajun turned the attention to himself and asked how he found them so quickly. Yuman said that when the blonde man hung up, he was very nervous. Suddenly, he met a patrolman on the road who helped him find them, and that's how he found them. Moreover, now he is glad that everything ended well. But now we can't let Unsu go home alone. Of course, it's unlikely that Wu Siob will return tonight, but it's better to be careful. Hajun offered to let him stay with him for a while, if he didn't mind. Seo Unsu started to refuse, but Hajun insisted especially since his house was not far from the university. They began to discuss whose house was closer. Yuman decided to help the blonde man. He told him to stay at his house. Moreover, he still had things to do himself, so he wouldn't be able to take him. So he would spend the night at Hajun's place and return home in the morning. Hajun agreed with his words. He asked again if he was okay with it. Blushing, Ansu said yes. 